Hi guys and welcome to another month and another session of batch cooking. Like, are you as excited for this as I am? So this month we are going to be having chicken biryani because I mean, come on. Then we're going to be having some meatballs. Okay, I'm checking my list. Then we will have, okay, here's the thing. I was going to make fish fingers and then uh, we went to, to the market and then the fish was unbuyable. So we just discarded that. Beef stew, uh, some chickpea curry, beans and coconut and gideri. Oh, it's been a while since we had gideri. So we're really looking forward to that. So that's what we are going to do in this video. If you like this kind of content here, we're all about making motherhood magical when it comes to cooking, cleaning, organizing, saving money in the home, self-care, you name it, we got it. So hit the subscribe button and now let's get on with cooking. So the first thing we are going to do is our chicken biryani because it needs to marinate. Ideally, I should have made this last night so that it can marinate, but I didn't. Yeah, I was going to work. I was working overnight. So yeah, I'm doing it now. And even if it marinates for only one hour, that's okay. But ideally, it should marinate overnight. And because I decided uh, to wear an apron, I'm bright like that. I mean, I decided to wear a white t-shirt. So I have to wear an apron and yeah, to protect my white t-shirt as obviously. So now let's go to our ingredients. For the marinade of our chicken, we are going to use mala. I have about four packets here. Oh, this is buttermilk or natural yogurt if you have plain yogurt. Then we're going to need salt. We are going to need some turmeric, uh, some paprika. Or chili flakes depending on who you're cooking for us we're cooking for kids so i'm going to use paprika some garam masala a garlic and ginger paste which i'm going to make just now my ginger is soaking because it was full of mud from the market but here i have the garlic a little bit of lemon and of course the mvp which is chicken we got this chicken from city market as you might have seen on the grocery haul video so these are eight kilos and i'm going to marinate all of them it's a bit more than we usually buy because we have a potluck tomorrow and i want to take some chicken biryani so that's what the chicken is about they have cut it for us and they have skinned it so very easy makes my life a whole lot easier so we're going to marinate that let me show you the rest of the ingredients that we will use now to fry the chicken once the chicken has marinated for at least an hour then we are going to fry it but in the meantime i'm going to deep fry a lot of onions they say onions are the major flavor when it comes to chicken biryani and it takes a long time to deep fry them until they're golden and caramelized and delicious so i'm going to be doing that as the chicken is marinating and as i'm cooking other dishes also when it's time to fry the meat or the chicken i'm going to use some cloves I'm going to use some uh, cardamom. I'm going to use some cinnamon bark and some cumin, some tomatoes, which I'm going to blend with onions, and then some bay leaves. We'll use some ghee in lieu of butter and some salt, and if need be, a little bit more buttermilk. Actually, you guys making chicken biryani is the easiest. The most important part, I think, is just marinating and making sure our chicken is flavorful boom and also the onions and then just combine everything and boom shakalax bobs your ankle so let's do this
so while the chicken has been marinating you saw what i've been up to first of all praise the lord for that food processor and the blender because this took like a minute okay maybe like 20 minutes but 20 minutes you guys this is to take me like a whole one and a half to two hours just chopping these things up oh thank you lord thank you to the person who gifted that to me let me show you what we are going to do next we are about to make our beef stew mm, and this is what i'm going to be needing i'm going to be needing some cumin seeds uh some i have some basil i have oregano paprika bay leaves rosemary those are the spices i'm going to use it's just a good old simple uh, uh beef stew all right then i have ghee in lieu of butter or butter or cooking oil whatever your heart fancies i have blended up my tomatoes here so it's gonna be awesome i have blended up my garlic ginger paste fantastic i have some green pepper here i have some uh, celery the market did not have leeks <laughs> then i have these ones these carrots and i have a bunch of onions here some of them i'm also going to dip, be, be deep frying for the chicken biryani so in fact i'm going to do both of them at the same time i'll be cooking the beef stew and deep frying the onions for the biryani uh did i say the green peppers yes i did and here i have my four kilos of beef which i have already boiled with some rosemary as you saw and i keep biting them because it's nice and soft so what i'm also going to put is some peas which have already boiled i don't know where they are somewhere in this kitchen i'll find them this is gonna be so quick and let's do this the beef is boiling away and the onions are frying away i want to make the chickpea curry and also the be the bean stew and the gideri yeah i'm going to make three things at once as we do because we are ninjas like that and before i even get there you guys let me tell you about the wonder that is these onions this is the first batch of onions that have removed from the cooking oil oh my gosh you guys, let me tell you, I was actually watching, what's her name? I was watching Mili Chebi. She was also making chicken biryani. And she mentioned how the onions are the secret to the chicken biryani. And ah, boy, was she right. The onions smell so good. When you cook them up to this, when they're golden like this and they're caramelized. Oh my gosh, they are smelling so delicious. I could eat them all. So I can just imagine once we put them in our chicken biryani how amazing they're going to smell and to taste oh my gosh i'm so glad i bought extra onions because i am deprived like a whole two kilos of them anyway <laughs> that aside let me show you my ingredients for my chickpea curry so now again i'm going to use green peppers i have onions uh, i have the tomato puree i've grated a lot of carrots all right here I have two kilos of chickpeas. I'm not going to cook all of them. I'm going to cook most of them, but I have 
to keep a bit of them to make hummus because there is nothing on this app I love more than hummus. My gosh, yes, so I'm going to make hummus. And now I have a blender so I can make hummus. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then, uh, apart from that, the spices, it's going to be a curry. So I have my cinnamon sticks, I have my cloves, I have my cardamom, I have my cumin seeds, basically all my spices, let me just say. I have paprika. I'm not going to use garam masala, I will use curry powder. I want it curried. I have some turmeric, of course. And two cans of coconut milk, which are nearly not enough, but they will have to do because I have to spare some for my beans. So that's for the, the for the what? For the chickpea curry. And let me show you what I'm going to use for the githeri, so that once we light the two fires, it's boom, boom, boom. And if you are liking this kind of content, remember to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And let me show you what I'm using to make githeri. Now, let me show you the ingredients I want to use for making gideri. I love gideri. It has been months, I think even half a year since we've had gideri. And what we're going to be using are the green peppers, what will be left of them, uh, onions, tomatoes, chopped carrots, and someone has asked me on Instagram what exactly I put in my gideri. I put anything, you guys. So, apart from the usual, the staple, which I have some green maize here from my freezer, and then we have some beans. This time we went with Roscoco. It's been a while. I'm excited for that. And I have boiled peas. And I have peeled some pereros because, yeah. And then I'm going to use the, my leftover oh, celery. So I had planned to cook with peanuts. But I totally forgot to soak all my lentils last night. So, and peanuts take for ever if you're boiling them oh my gosh they take forever even if you soak them for 12 hours or 24 hours so i was like those ones cannot be rushed so i gave up on those ones so my gideri will just be mainly have beans peas and potatoes ah ooh -wee, maize and potatoes and for spices i'm i like to keep my gideri simple so i'll use paprika i'll use some cumin seeds and i'll use some curry powder and that's it please remember when you see me putting a uh, liquid in all my dishes i do not cook with water no i use stock so in the morning as we were boiling everything else we also boiled quite a lot of beef stock so that's what we'll be using for cooking boom let's do this So there we have it, we have three meals down, we have three to go, and right now I want to tackle the beans. Guys, the day I will do a batch cooking without some type of beans, send someone to come and check my temperature because something will be extremely off. I love beans, they are healthy, they are full of fiber, they are full of protein, they are easy to make, we love them with rice, I mean, I mean, I don't even need to sell you guys on beans, you know how good they are. So now, I'm, I'm keeping it very simple this time with the beans. Uh, yeah, let me show you my ingredients and how we're gonna do this. Right here we have our garlic and ginger paste still going strong. I have the remainder of the tomatoes I had blended and I've mixed them with some uh, green peppers because we needed to clean up. Uh, the remainder of our celery, lots and lots of carrots, uh, some salt, some cumin, 
seed not the ground one uh, i have some curry powder some paprika coconut cream i have tomato paste i have some onions and our boiled beans this is going to be so fast the most important thing when it comes to cooking beans i have found is to let them simmer for a long time once you have finished frying them so let me just get this going and then we finally finish with our chicken biryani which has somehow managed to marinate for a long time more than an hour clearly so that's awesome so let's do this And now it's the moment we have all been waiting for, well at least me, and now it's time to make the chicken biryani. First of all, let me tell you guys about these deep fried onions. They are delicious. Oh my gosh. I keep munching on them. I don't even think there'll be anything left for cooking. Now, I have some other onions, which are not deep fried, they are raw, okay? I have my chicken here. I have some tomato paste. I've blended some more car uh, not carrots, what are these called? Tomatoes. Mm, we have salt. I have cumin seeds. I have some cardamom. I have got some cloves. Some cinnamon bark. And lastly, some bay leaves. Simple, easy, like Sunday morning. Let's do this. Hi guys, it's another new month and I am so pumped for today's batch cooking session. Yes, so if you're new here, we'd like to cook once a month. We're a family of seven and we just think it saves a lot of time instead of cooking every day, spending two hours in the kitchen. And also it's nice to have a meal plan which we follow as we are batch cooking because it shows that we eat healthy and yeah, it's just good for us anyway. So if you like this kind of content, remember to hit the subscribe button. And now let me tell you exactly what we are going to eat this month. Pork. Would you believe I have not cooked pork in our house for the last eight years? Yes, yes, yes. Well, once upon a time, eight years ago, I read something in the newspaper that just traumatized my life. But now and then just maybe stop eating pork and consequently stop cooking pork for my family. But I have realized I'm just being cuckoo crazy. Pork is healthy. It is healthier than red meat for sure. And it is, uh, it is cheaper than red meat, more affordable. And also it is yummy. So I'm going to cook pork for the first time in eight years. I'm really excited. The recipe that I found promised to be the easiest, juiciest, greatest, deliciousest and all those things. But we are going to prove that today and see whether that is true or not. So I'm going to cook pork and then chicken. Because I am running late, I am sure nobody is surprised about that here. Today I'm not going to cook, cook, cook chicken. What I'm going to do is I'm going to marinate it, put it in Ziploc bags, dump it in our freezer, and then the day we want it, we'll thaw it, and then we'll grill it in the oven, and boom, bam, boom, we have grilled chicken for dinner. How easy is that? Yes. So I won't cook it, I'll just marinate it. That should take me 10 minutes at most beef stew because hello it's beef stew need i say more meatballs because hello they're meatballs you know we have kids kids love meatballs and grown-ups too so yeah meatballs and then i bought three new types of beans if you watch the grocery haul video so we have uh butter beans the black ones we have yellow beans and we have um, bazis so those ones should be quick and fast so this should be very quick Let's see how it goes. I 
I've started with the beef stew recipe because it's easy, it's straightforward. I've done it so many times here. We love it like that. We've already boiled the, be the beef. It's the one we got from the slaughterhouse if you watched my uh, grocery haul video. So yeah, I'm just frying the rest of the vegetables and then I'll put in the beef, my lovely spices and Bob's your uncle. And this is what we're going to have for dinner. So it will be very quick. Guys, guess where I got this rosemary from? Yes, I got it from my garden. I finally have rosemary in my garden that is fresh. Fresh, 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 fresh. So my garden is doing pretty good. Of course, when I say pretty good, you know what I mean it's just barely surviving. <laughs> but we'll get there. I'm pretty happy about this rosemary. batch cooking and the uh, what do you call it the food processor and the blender were the MVPs well today we have a new MVP yes I am upgrading my kitchen one MVP at a time <laughs> so boom so no I'm not cooking with Jumia uh, but I'm cooking with what is inside the Jumia box which I'll show you just now so a lot of you have been telling me the way I need to up my game when it comes to boiling stuff in my kitchen and I heard you people so I went and bought myself a pressure cooker yes on Jumia no less because I mean you only live once so I want to show you guys the pressure cooker that I bought I'm really excited because now boiling beans and lentils should be a five minutes affair. That's what you guys told me. They have a pressure cooker. This thing they're going to be ready in five minutes. It better be five minutes, you guys, or I'm coming for you. Anyway, I'm just kidding. So let me show you what I got. So I always used to have this phobia of pressure cooker. Today's video seems to be a lot about my phobias. Anyway, I used to worry about pressure cookers exploding on me. And I actually wanted to buy an uh, you know an instant pot, a digital one, and I'll get there, guys. But I found this one, which they are calling explosion proof, and it really looks explosion proof, you guys. So this one is 11 liters, and if you want to buy it, I'll put a link down below. You guys, please just use my link. It really supports my channel when you do that, and I appreciate that. Ow. So now, here is my 11 liters pressure cooker from Julia and let me show you how it looks like uh, I already pre-soaked pre my beans lentils and what you might call it last night okay so everything has been soaked and ready so here is my pressure cooker okay and then the manual did I throw the manual comes with the manual uh -huh. it's made of aluminium in case you're wondering and that's all that I can read from the manual but it should be easy it's a no-brainer guys it's a no-brainer all right so these are the handles which I am going to fix right here okay you know that's how they go yes 
metrastic screw and then we got this for here this kind of thing my mom used to have one of these when we were younger just to just give me nightmares so there we have it so i want to wash it and then i start boiling my beans and then i'll tell you guys whether they will take five minutes or not Let's talk about pork, okay? Here I have all the ingredients that I need for making pork. It's a very simple recipe, or so it looked, but then it also looked very delicious. So let's see how this goes. I have three kilos of pork, which I bought from city market, but not from our usual vendor because our usual vendor is Muslim, but they directed me to another place to buy the pork. So we've chopped it up. It's looking nice and healthy. I have my dark brown sugar right here. I have onions. I have garlic and ginger paste. I have black pepper. I have oyster sauce. I had to go to Naivas for this especially. And I have dark soy sauce and I have salt. And that's it. It's very easy. Let's hope it will be very delicious. Let's go to the stove. So after having cooked the pork and tasted it, um, <laughs> all I can say is I think it was um, uh, over advertised. <laughs> um, I, I will not be trying that recipe again. I'll look for other uh, pork recipes. If you have one that you'd like me to try, please let me know down below because <laughs> yeah. I remove it from the freezer uh, a few hours before in the morning, let's say from around 10 a.m. if you're going to have it for dinner. And then once it has thawed, pour out the excess water and then oil my baking tray, uh, roast it in the oven for 45 minutes and halfway flip it, okay? Also sprinkle a bit of salt if needed. And my gosh, oh, it smells so good. It tastes even most delicious. Very, very good. Please try this recipe. And it's so easy, saves so much time. Love it. This chicken recipe, you guys, is just absolutely fantabulous, okay? So we've already had it, as you can see, and uh, we're having it the, this month with ugali, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness.
Um, I would say the pressure cooker lived up to its expectations or to my expectations because the beans all cooked in about 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, yeah, I'm still getting the hang of it. So this was my first time using it, but I would highly recommend it. And yeah, it saved a lot of time. Definitely a pressure cooker is, is, uh, is a good idea for sure, for sure. So now it's a whole new day because I couldn't finish batch cooking because I had to go to work. I mean, you know, life has to go on. So now, uh, yeah, I want to cook the mbazi and the yellow beans because they're already boiled. A pressure cooker came through. So that's what I want to do. I love yellow beans because they're so creamy and yummy and I decided to add some peas because I'm from the mountains number one and number two because I had extra peas and I thought it would be nice you just for color you know and I, I, I love cooking with a lot of vegetables because it's it just adds all the nutrients of the vegetables and someone was asking me how what I do to make our kids love vegetables or what I did and they just they have they are surrounded by vegetables in whatever they eat so they just i think they just fell in love with it so i think it's a good idea to just add a lot of vegetables in whatever that you're cooking either on the side or in the dish itself it all comes out really nice so yes <laughs> it is another day of cooking because oh my gosh life is just happening to me this time round it is happening with all cylinders not laugh at my baby carrots from our garden uh, at least we tasted them and they were okay yes if you saw the grocery haul video it talked about how <laughs> our carrots did not <laughs> they did not mature <laughs> oh my gosh yes funny times fun times uh, my amazing sister-in-law was around in in january and she brought me spices oh my gosh you know you love cooking when someone comes visiting and they think the best gift they can bring for you is spices for cooking and yes she was so right oh my gosh these spices really elevated this dish i cannot even So guys, today I'm making the meatballs. This is the batch cooking that has taken me three days to actually do it. But this is the last thing that I need to make. So I have my one kilo of beef here. I have one and a half cups of, uh, of what are these? Meat, meat hoot. <laughs> three onions. And then I have three, uh, three eggs, which I don't think I'm going to need. Then I have salt, I have coriander spice, and I have basil. I've done this before, you guys, so this will be very quick. For the beef, for the minced beef, I had two kilos of it, and that's too many meatballs. So what I did is I divided half of it. I'm going to use to make a stew. I'll show you a few snippets of that, and the rest I'm going to use to make the meatballs. So let's get on with it.
I decided to add butternut squash uh, to my meatball recipe. I've never done this before, but I had the butternut and I thought it's nice to add just extra flavor, extra color and extra texture to the meatball stew, which was so amazing. And yeah, I like experimenting with such things and this time it came out very well. I don't write the dates on the covers of the containers because all these meals will be eaten in one month anyway. But I do write what is in the containers, of course, so that we know what is stored where. So, yes, I don't write the dates. But if I was storing for longer than a month, then I would. But since in a month's time, all the freezers will be empty again, I don't need to. Hi guys and welcome to Foodland. Yes, this is another video where I'm just going to be showing how I batch cooked for, for a month. Actually, I'm aiming for six weeks. I think I'll make it because of course you guys know the cost of living is through the roof and yeah so i'm going to be cooking for for a lot more meals than i normally would just try and stretch them and yeah the first thing i did last night was to soak the beans and the lentils just pick them out wash them soak them for easier boiling today I'm really excited that you're here and stay tuned because we are going to make the pork recipe that you guys chose because if you watched my previous batch cooking video then you saw how uh, I botched <laughs> I botched my pork and you all were so concerned you guys are the best so you sent me quite a lot of recipes and I want to show you how that went so I'm so happy that you're here yeah let's do this So I'm actually starting to cook late afternoon, actually evening, late afternoon, evening, uh, because we are, I'm also making dinner. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, when you are a working mom, uh, you cannot afford to be picky on when you do what, because you do according to your work schedule. So it's quite it's it's much later of course i prefer to start batch cooking early in the morning but you know what life has to go on and you just have to adjust with the way things go of course i'm so grateful that we have a food processor because it makes everything go so much faster so yeah i'm really just hoping to be done uh i guess i don't know soon we'll see So when it comes to beef stew, I have this tried and true beef stew recipe that comes through every single time. But <laughs> I'm ready for something else, guys. If you know another way to make beef stew, 
and it has to be steel guys does it have to i don't know just let me know another you think that i can make this name is not be picky uh let me know in the comment section below but now one thing you're going to notice in today's video is that i'm using quite a lot of vegetables in my meals one of course because it is healthy and two because i need to stretch these meals this is a hack for you guys in this day and age of you know prices that are just unbelievable it is so important to stretch your meals let your meals go further and adding vegetables is really nice because it really bulks up it really bulks up your meals and you end up getting a lot even double what you would have gotten had you not added vegetables and some of you guys ask me all the time oh how do you how come what did you do to make your kids love vegetables well my kids are surrounded by vegetables so yeah there's that you know so it's i'm really aiming to have this whole batch cooking uh what the meals that i'm going to make i'm aiming to have enough meals for six weeks so let's see how this goes i also like to add potatoes to my stews of course one because i'm from the mountains but i like to grate them so that they disintegrate so that the soup is thick but you cannot really see the potatoes because you know yeah yeah sometimes it's just nice to have thick thick stew yeah I love it. I love it when my food tastes great. Happy dance. This chicken recipe has become my go-to hands down. I just change up the spices because it is so fast. It is so easy and we love roasted chicken and yeah just dump everything in your in your freezer bag put in the chicken marinate it and then roast it in the oven for um, roast it for how many minutes for like 45 minutes of course flipping it halfway never fails So now let's talk about the pork because this was a very uh, <laughs> controversial one on my last batch cooking. Even I did not like the way it came out. So I asked you guys and oh my gosh, you guys are just the bestest because you gave me so many ideas. But uh, let me share the tips that I'm going to use from you guys. Um, one of my very faithful viewers and commenters, they're called Integer Consulting. I guess it's a business name. So uh, they said... And which everyone seems to agree with that when boiling pork first of all someone said don't stew pork again and everybody seemed to agree with this apparently pork and soup don't go well together so they said dry fry or wet fry or roast all right and then integer consulting which is a very faithful viewer and commenter on the channel as i said said this is a tip because again, also other people seem to agree that the first thing to do is to boil your pork first before then you dry fry it or wet fry it. They said when boiling it before frying, add crushed whole cloves of garlic, which I have here, rosemary, and salt, which has disappeared, okay? And then it won't have that porky smell and the flavor will be there by the time you are frying. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm first going to boil it with very little water oh no okay let me tell you the other recipe the rest of the recipe this one comes from Susie ben who's also a very faithful viewer and commenter she said uh the food looks delicious there yeah, thank you sue uh, next time when you're cooking pork first let the pork boil without adding water Susie, how do i boil it without adding water is that boiling 
think I get what you're saying, but I think I'll add a little bit of what half a cup maybe. And then she's like, and, and when it's dry, add your onions, yeah, fry till golden brown, and then add your spices here and tomatoes and let it cook. Okay, pork is sweet when dry fried. And she said, if you put water, you will never eat pork again. That's true, guys. My last pork recipe was a disaster. In fact, Santos Wesley also said for the pork, don't add oil and water. Let it cook in its own oil and you will love it. A lot of people said pork has in enough oil. I know this, but yeah, basically, let's see how this goes. So I have here two kilos of pork that I bought from City Market. Contact is down below as always. And then I'm going to add some coriander once it's done. I have two onions. Then I have about five tomatoes. I have the rosemary for boiling and the, uh, the garlic cloves. And for the spices, I'm going to also boil with a bit of bay leaves. When it comes to dry frying it, I'll put paprika because you know. And then ginger powder, a bit of coriander and garam masala. If you're interested in how to use the spices, I did a whole video showing you what spices go well with what. And you can check out that video. So now, let's cook this pork. thing that could possibly happen has happened at five minutes to midnight yes i was doing so well as you have seen dishes flying off of my cooking cooking cooker and i only have four dishes remaining 
the vegetarian dishes, the beans, the lentils, the ala beans, and the chickpeas. I was like, bass, I'll be done. I'm like, two fires here, two fires there, boom, 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 and I'm done. Hmm. Guess what, sister? It's a big problem, eh? I've run out of gas. Mm -hmm. It's midnight. Of course, we have nowhere to go and refill, but thankfully, we have a make. I mean, we have options. So, yeah. Well, the show continues. I was actually making myself a cup of decaf because I read, I, I read, I need as part of energy. And then that's when I realized uh, nothing is cooking. And then the, what do you call it, the meat sauce, as someone told me, the minced meat. I'm wondering, how come this food is not bubbling away anymore? Everything is so quiet all of a sudden. Hey, lo and behold, there's nothing happening in the bottom part. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let me continue. Yeah. Thank you so much guys for that pork recipe by the way it just it came through man you guys always come through you guys are so nice thank you thank you for for teaching me you actually you teach me quite a lot of stuff so now remember to put down below how we can make this beef stew go to the next level the beef stew that we made okay because you guys saved my pork game now i'm a pork expert thank you so yeah, obviously, let's deal with this minced beef now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's easy. You guys, Murphy's Law is real. Like, how even? <laughs> how even does my girls just decide to die for me the day I'm batch cooking? Actually, I don't think this has ever happened to me in my entire three years of batch cooking. Four years, I don't know how long I've been doing it. I lost track. But, well, thank God for having multiple sources of fire because my friend, what would I have done? You know? yeah let me know you guys i've been batch cooking for as i said for a long time now let me know whether you you have tried batch cooking and how long do you make your meals for is it a week is it two days and all that um yeah again as i said my my meals are chock full of vegetables so yeah let's do this When I'm making the meatless dishes, this this fat always goes the fastest because I find them very easy to make. And a lot of you have suggested over the over the past over the past in the past <laughs> uh, a lot of you have suggested in the past that I should just make one base and then divide it because it seems to be very similar. But the only thing that changes for me, and that's why I don't like making the same base, is I change the spices. And you know, once you change the spices, you change the taste. So that's why I like to make the bases uh, different. By the bases, I mean, you know, the um, the huati, the the tom the onions, tomatoes, and all that. So yeah, again. I like to put the spices there. Now, one thing you guys are just say is that when you are putting spices, especially the whole spices, go easy on them. Okay, you know the cardamom, the the, the cloves, all that. Again, refer to that video we did about spices. <laughs> because I have this tendency of just grabbing with my hands and then tossing. And I've noticed a few times that those things, the taste is strong. You need to literally count how many you're putting and more than five you've put too much now me when i grab and with my hands and I just put <laughs> the taste becomes ever so overpowering sometimes so just go easy go easy on them okay please <laughs> apparently 
a lot of you have 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 a number of you have cooked these njugumawes i don't know what they're called in english and they seemed to say that i should try them in kideri again i don't know how to describe kideri unless i put up a photo for you here uh yeah so next time i'm going to do that and then you can see that when i boil it in the grocery haul video when i boil them in the pressure cooker they get soft we did that they didn't soften up i don't know why we'll, we'll try them again so guys this is the finished product of all our batch cooking yesterday i was hoping to get a bit more meals than this but i actually only ended up with 31 meals it's slightly more than i normally get but it could have been better all right so these are the beefs for the beef stews I have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And it's this much because I put in a lot of vegetables, guys. I bulked it up. Normally I get about four, mostly five. But now, today I've gotten six because I bulked it up with a lot of vegetables. All right. Then here I have the minced meat stew. One, two, three, four. I got four. Four proper meals. And then there we have the green beans. One, two, three, four. The green army beans, I got four. Hmm. Thought I'd get more than that. All right. Then here we have the dengue special. I don't know how to call it in English, guys. I got this as a lot. I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six of that. And the other beans, I got four of them. And then the chickpeas, I only got two, all right? But I also got these extra small bowls. These are the ones we'll be using for lunch in case there are no leftovers the previous night. So those ones will come in handy. But normally, the, the vegetarian dishes, I normally pack enough to be enough for lunch, for dinner, and then lunch the following day. For the chicken, I ended up with five. So that's five meals. So basically we have enough food for five weeks. I'll see if we can push it to six weeks by cooking some roast potatoes here and there. I was aiming for six weeks, you guys, just to try and recover all the money that I spent because you guys' food has become so expensive. If you watch the grocery haul video, as I said earlier, then you will see how much money. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I hope you've learned a few tips here on how to just make your food go further how to batch cook for a month let me know in the comment section below whether you have ever tried batch cooking if not why not for those who say it's not healthy please show us uh <laughs> evidence to the same and watch another video on this channel guys i really appreciate you for spending this time with me and uh, bye